we'll talk a little bit about passwords, the history, where we are, where we're going. Uh, so just a quick show of hands. Uh, how many of you remember all your passwords? You remember all your passwords? Okay, you do. Thank you, man. Uh, anybody else? Okay. I raised my hand, but I can't remember all my passwords. Uh, it could be the gray hair, but I wasn't that good, you know, 20 years ago either. So uh, here's an interesting thing. Uh, Ma'am, how many passwords do you have? Three. Three passwords. Thank you very much. So uh, that's actually kind of interesting. Uh, a little bit about my background. I know they, they uh, mentioned the bio. Um, so uh, what's interesting that you may want to know is uh, I'm, uh, I'm the inventor of two patents, issued patents, and one pending patent on eliminating passwords and, uh, and mobile payments. So we've done a fair amount of work. I've been working in this area for the last four years. Uh, uh, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, so that you know where, where my, uh, my thoughts and opinions are coming from. Okay, uh, I think it would be helpful if we went back to what got passwords started, what was the idea behind it, right? Because, you know, things have changed. Passwords were invented in 1961, uh, 56 years ago, okay? Now, the history of computing, you know, five years is a long time. 50 years is a really, really long time. So, uh, and, and it was on the first time sharing system in MIT, and, and, and the environment was such that, uh, you know, you'd pass through a security guard, you'd, you'd enter into a secure room, because, you know, those IBM mainframes were really expensive, time was very expensive, and all you wanted to do, protect yourself from maybe up to 10 people in the room, okay? So it wasn't a whole lot of protection that was needed. But today, uh, things are a little different. Uh, passwords were not designed to protect us from automated attacks, phishing, social hacking, theft. I mean, those are all the things that we're going through today, and we think that a user ID password is going to protect us, but it was never designed to do that. So uh, passwords are getting more complex. Anybody notice that? Okay. Uh, you need to have uppercase, lowercase symbol, number. That's no news. What's interesting is how long they're getting. Because the longer they are, the more complex they are. It's the harder to remember part. So GoDaddy, uh, their new minimum is 12 characters. Uh, Freddie Mac, Weston Dental, which is one of our clients, uh, 16 character minimums for server passwords. And actually, they created in a Western Dental a created a new server for us, and uh, our password were 33 characters. I'm not lying, 33 characters. It was extremely safe because every time we typed it, there was a typo, and then eventually the server would lock up. We could never log into it, so it was extremely safe. But it got nothing done. Uh, so again, with all that going on, I, I, I think uh, thank you for remembering all your three passwords. Uh, 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 but but we're, we're getting into a bit of a problem area. Okay. Another interesting side on the fraud, if you look at it, two out of three data breaches are from stolen uh, uh, login credentials. Okay. As compared to last year in 2016, as compared to 2015, uh, fraud attempts are up by 50%. Now, that's huge, okay? More so than just about any other year. Uh, also, the average cost of a data breach is getting higher and higher. It's uh, on the average of about $7 million per data breach. Now, you have one of those data breaches happen, $7 million bucks. Even for most companies, that's a sizable sum. And God forbid, if you're in the healthcare business, then you've got fines and other things to go with. So something is happening. So why is all this stuff happening? Right, there's a change if you notice. We're hearing data breaches in the news all the time. Well, the problem is passwords are getting stolen. Uh, one company before this morning said there were 3.3 billion passwords stolen. But let me give you, put that in context. Yahoo, we all know about a billion passwords stolen. There are three adult sites, 500 million passwords stolen. Uh, JP Morgan Chase, 76 million. Uh, uh, passwords stolen, including your uh, address, phone number, email, 
uh, financial, you know, how much money you had account. They got me on that one. Okay? I trust Chase, right? No, they got me on that one. Uh, Tumblr, Dropbox, 65, 68 million. Blue Cross, 80 million. They went years. They got your medical records. MySpace, 164 million. eBay, 145 million. Even LinkedIn, that forced uh, password resets uh, this, this past year, 117 million. Those are a lot of numbers. And I wish they were all, but we got more and more. Okay? And we got some pretty nasty ones in there too. Ashley Medicine, I, I don't know anybody uh, uh, frequented that site, but not only they stole your user ID password, they also stole your chat history with uh, other people that you were hooking up with. So they were using it to blackmail people. Oh, you're married, you're having an affair, hey, give us so much money, otherwise we'll tell your spouse. Um, Office of Personnel Management. Anybody have security clearance? Okay, well, congratulations. The really tough questions that you answered, the one that you didn't want anybody to know, I think the Chinese government knows that now. Okay. I can't believe that wasn't a big deal. Huh? I can't believe that wasn't a big deal. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the calibration of media as to what's important and what's not. Uh, to me, that's like the, one of the worst things. Because, uh, you know, some people could be blackmailed now. They could be holding an important position in the government. And there's no reason for, for that, for that uh, uh, data breach to happen. They knew that they were not encrypting stuff, and, but they got caught anyway. Even, you know, most loved websites like Facebook and Google, you know, five or six million uh, uh, passwords stolen. So, this is bad, right? Uh, the numbers are staggering. Uh, there are over two and a half billion passwords uh, that are stolen, user IDs and passwords stolen, and I think there was another number, 3.3 million. Uh, whatever it is, it's just a humongous number, right? So, uh, and the problem is, almost every company and every government agency can and probably will be hacked at some point, okay? Including FBI, CIA, and uh, some of the other stuff. Because the hackers are ranging from uh, either professional or amateur individual hackers. Uh, we've seen those. Uh, security researchers kind of getting in there. Uh, and they may or may not use uh, the information for a good purpose. Uh, organized and not so organized crime. That's huge. Financial motive is the biggest driver. And then uh, we got industrial spies, uh, Edwards case. Uh, uh, in Orange County, everybody knows. Uh, every, if, I don't know if you guys heard. Uh, their news heart valve uh, was stolen. Design was stolen. Foreign government sponsored groups, uh, terrorist groups, and spy agencies, like in the case of OPM. So this stuff is, is, is getting more and more difficult, and we're thinking of user ID password. 56 year old technology is going to protect us. Yeah, we do a little bit more in the background, but effectively, uh, we got to let people come in. Uh, the problem is, how do we keep the bad actors out, okay? And user ID password isn't cutting it. Average consumer has 118 accounts, online accounts today, uh, reaching 207 by 2020, okay? So how are the consumers protecting themselves? Eight out of 10 users use the same user ID and password on multiple sites. 55% use the same password, uh, if not most, on all their sites. And we have a case, three passwords on, if, you, if you're the average ma'am, you've got 108 accounts and you've got three passwords and 108 accounts, okay? So you're seeing a pattern here that's getting to be a problem. Because 118 unique passwords are almost impossible. And, uh, and some of us are using algorithmic passwords. Anybody uses algorithmic unique passwords per site? Yeah, that's the thing that we're taught, right? So use some kind of an algorithm, uh, a keyword, and something site-specific. So for every site, you'll have a unique algorithm. Great. Let's say I'm using Jack to Yahoo for my Yahoo account. Okay? And then I'm using Jack to Google for my Google account. Jack to Citibank for Citibank. Can anybody guess what my Chase password is going to be? A quick show of hands. It's not that hard, right? It really isn't. So once they know a few of your password, they know all of your passwords. Okay. 
So sometimes being smart can actually work against you. This is one of those cases. So I make this case. I mean, there's nothing mind shattering here or shattering here, but, but you realize when you add all these facts together, there is getting to be a pretty strong case. Now, how many of you are familiar with keyboard loggers? Just a quick show of hands. Okay, a lot of you are. Wonderful. So, we have a keyboard logger. I'm trying to log in. And the keyboard logger gets in there. They got it. Okay? So, does it matter how complex my password is if I have a keyboard logger? It's capturing, for the people who don't know, keyboard loggers capture every single character that you type. And then eventually they send it. So does it matter how complex, how secure my password is? Even that 33 character password that Weston Donald gave us would have been compromised in the situation. So you have no protection. And by the way, uh, keyboard loggers are so bad, I heard that there are about 200 new variants that hit the market every day. So uh, it's, it's, it's getting to be a major issue. So now that they're capturing everything on your computer, what if I type www.bankofamerica.com? What's the next thing I'm going to type? Anybody can guess? Not hard. Not hard, right? My user ID and password. Um, and, and as soon as I type it, my password, uh, uh, as I said, it, the complexity is irrelevant. So let me ask you something else. If, I, if, uh, if, if you were a keyboard logger and you show a 16-digit number that started with 5, anybody know what that is? It's a MasterCard. What about a 16-digit number that starts with a 4? It's a Visa. Okay. How many 16-digit numbers are you going to see being typed from a keyboard? Not that many. 15 digits to start with the three, just to complete the stuff. That's American Express. Okay? You don't really have to be smart application to figure out. There's no AI involved here, right? So uh, this stuff is pretty bad. Uh, it's so bad that uh, a couple of years ago, an enterprising hacker in Europe took out a Yahoo banner ad, somewhat seductive ad. And uh, uh, it was very popular. Obviously, it cost them a lot of money as people were clicking on it. But when you clicked on it, it actually went to a, uh, a site which uh, tried to infect your computer with a keyboard logger. They were infecting 2 million computers an hour. Okay? So once you have that, once you have their, their passwords, uh, then uh, it's, it's, it's game over. How important is this? Now, there's a new NBC uh, study that was done. 39% of Americans would give up sex for a year to never have to worry about uh, being hacked. Giving up sex for a year, that's, that's tough, sex for a year. Now, out of curiosity, how many of you would give up sex for a year not to be ever hacked uh, for the rest of your lives? Okay, well, sex is important then. Okay, fine. So... <laughs> If something's wrong with the survey, oh, it's NBC News, so, okay. Maybe they're right, but, but it, it, maybe it's not 39%, maybe it's 35%, maybe it's 42%, I don't know. But it's a staggering number, okay? Because sex for a year is, 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 is a very valuable thing to have, at least when I last heard of it. So, uh, so what's the best long-term solution? Getting more complex password ain't it, right? We, we need something better. So we use the carts, the, the uh, uh, horse carts. Now we need automobiles, okay? We use candles. Now we need electricity. We need lamps. So the best long-term solution is to get rid of password, is to eliminate passwords. Why? Because if you don't have a password, it can't be stolen. Now think about it. You can't steal something that doesn't exist. And uh, the plus side is, if you eliminate passwords, you'll eliminate 67% of the data breaches. Now it's not quite 80-20 rule, but it's a huge amount, right? Because 67% of the data breaches are bad actors coming in through the front door. If you take the passwords away, all those stolen passwords are meaningless. 
So that, that's a good idea, Jack, but you know, there's, now there's reality, right? So, uh, well, let me uh, tell you a little bit about uh, real life examples of if we had eliminated passwords, how would it work? What would it do? Uh, anybody familiar with the John Podesta email hack? Okay, there are a few people. Uh, or General Colin Powell's email hack. Okay, our beloved Google was the uh, was the host for both of those email systems. So they got something like this. I don't know if you can see it, but it says an official looking uh, official email from Google that says someone has your password. Somebody tried to log in into your account. We blocked them. Click here to change your password. It's important you do that now. <clears throat> now, if you were not a computer security expert, how many of you thought that you know your 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 parents, your 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 siblings, your your children would actually click on this thing? Pretty high. I mean, it's it's from Google, right? Why would you not believe it? And of course, the minute you click on it, it says old password, new password, new password. Well, you type in your old password, they're in business. They got you, right? So, now in the case of John Podesta, uh, he was smarter than average. He actually said, okay, is this real or are they, are they screwing with me? So he actually sent an email to Hillary Clinton's IT staff and said, this is, this is what I got, what should I do? And I don't know if you can read from back there. And they say, hey, this is legitimate email. We should change your password right away. Now, these are educated IT folks. So can't blame them. It was really good. And uh, th there's, uh, there's a new one that I just uh, discovered recently from uh, WordFence. Once you have all those email accounts that, are, uh, uh, that have been uh, 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 hacked, they have a uh, contact list, right? Because every email account has to have contact list, so they know who your friends and your family are. Uh, you might actually have some I interesting content in there as well. So what they do, they take your uh, uh, people on your mailing list, and they actually send them a picture or an attachment, something that kind of fits right, okay? Something you'd, you'd want to know. And they actually send it to people that have Gmail accounts or Google accounts. So what happens is, if you click on it, there's a page comes up, okay? You can't see from the bottom, but right on the bottom in the URL, it basically says data text, and then there's HTML. But you very clearly see there's an HTTPS column slash slash accounts.google.com, service login. So it's got the right URL in it, but it looks a little funny, and okay, maybe you're not sure. What you cannot see is all that extra space after the red arrow, and then there's a script. And unfortunately, you know, the, the location bar is not big enough, long enough, to show everything to you. And as soon as you click on that attachment, okay, you get this login page that says, hey, you need to sign in to your Google account to be able to see this. Okay, as soon as you do, they've got your password. So, what would happen if we didn't have passwords? So if you don't have a password, then you can eliminate the data breaches from phishing attacks as well. You'll obviously, if you don't have a password, somebody asks for your passwords, then you say, okay, why are they asking for my password? It's, that's the old stuff. We're not using passwords anymore. And if even somebody clicks on it, there's no password to enter. And even if you have untrained users who were not taught how to deal with situations like this, they couldn't do anything because they don't have a password to enter. So you can see that logically how that thing fits in that we really need to get rid of passwords. Passwords are not saving us. And most of you would agree, I, I've, so far I haven't met any, anybody who likes passwords, maybe I'm wrong, I haven't met anybody yet. Who loves passwords? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. So that's been holding pretty, pretty true. So if we want to get rid of passwords, how can we do that, right? Uh, we can get rid of passwords by turning our phones into our digital identities, okay? Because uh, everyone, almost everyone has one. 
and we almost carry, uh, always carry our phones with us. Again, quick show of hands, who doesn't have their cell phone on them? You don't have one, okay. Can you tell me why? I'm sorry, what? Okay, great. Uh, anybody else? Doesn't they have their phones on them? Okay. So, uh, for most people, they will, they will carry their phones with them. Um, that's a good one, but typically it, uh, it works uh, fairly well for people. So, uh, how do you eliminate passwords? Okay, I'm going to give you the 10,000 uh, 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 foot view of this. And, but this is something you can take and implement yourself if you wanted to. Okay? So basically, you send a login request to your smartphone, and you could use that using a QR or push or image or sound waves, electromagnetic waves, or even EMC if you're close by. And then you can verify identity. There are two ways that easy ways that you can do this. One is encryption, and the other, wise, uh, the other one is device fingerprinting. Okay? So if you use encryption, PKI is usually the most commonly used encryption method for that. So you'll, use your, you'll store your user ID on your phone, and then uh, you'll, you'll encrypt the user ID with the server's public key, and, uh, and then you send it to the server. Server encrypts, uh, decrypts it with their private key, and if, if it decrypts, then, hey, it's, it's who you say you are. Then they're going to let you in. Okay? Very simple, very straightforward. Uh, the downside of encryption is that the data and the encryption keys can easily be copied or stolen. You can restore a backup and then get the data files out of there. Uh, you can copy the app data from rooted or jailbroken phones. Uh, and there's some malware that will go across app boundaries and, and, and fetch some data. The problem is, if they have your keys, then they have you. Okay, That's kind of the, the worst part, is you thought that you were safe, but they stole your, uh, your certificates, your, your user ID, and, and now you're, you're a deeper doo-doo than you were before because now they can pretend to be you everywhere. If we do device fingerprinting, which is, uh, in my opinion, a lot safer, uh, you're aware that every smartphone, every smartphone has uh, unique hardware, right? Anybody doubt that, please see me afterwards, and I'll show you why that is so. So if you read the hardware information off your device, uh, that information cannot be falsified. And that's a great thing for, uh, for identity. And then you take that device fingerprint, whatever factors you look at, you associate that with a user, now you have a much more robust way of identifying who the user is, and you can't really crack that thing. That's much better than encryption-based uh, solutions. The downside of... Uh, uh, device fingerprinting is uh, if he takes my phone, he's me, right? He's got my device, so I can't do that. The other part is if I change my phone, then I got a different device fingerprint, and I have to go through an association process again. But a significant step over encryption processes that work today. All the Duo and Google. Uh, uh, um, uh, authenticators, they're all based on encryption, okay? So device fingerprinting, I think, is a little superior to that. Now, what we do at SecureMe, uh, I'll share our secret with you, is we use dynamic mobile device fingerprinting. Because as you know, as I mentioned, every phone is unique, every person is unique, right? So if you combine, <coughs> If you combine you plus your phone, then you get a, a, a unique uh, mobile fingerprint that's tamper-proof, and that's individualized. So if he was to steal my phone or, or find my phone, he can't log in as me because he's not me. Okay? So that's a, that's a much better level of security. Now, anybody interested in creating your own uh, way of eliminating passwords? Okay, we have at least one buyer. So uh, what I recommend uh, is uh, you can do this. The implementation is not extremely hard. Uh, the user experience takes significantly more effort because you really want to make it nice and easy to use. 
Uh, password and, 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 and uh, uh, patents are a significant barrier to entry. Now, as technologists, that's probably the last thing we ever want to look at. But if you ever look at the lawsuits that are going on, God forbid if you do something that infringes on somebody else's patent and then you're successful, then you will get sued. And there are large amounts of money that are, they're talking about. The bad news is passwordless login is very heavily patented and most approaches are already patented. So if you're going to do your own, highly recommend uh, you or somebody else preferably just do a patent research and find out what's been patented and then find a way around it. Or uh, you, could, you could consider licensing one of those patents and then you could avoid litigation. Okay. Now we're at the fun part. Anybody want to see a live action login? All right, All right. Let's get there. Now let me switch to a browser. I'm going to give you, uh, if I can, uh, sorry, I'm going to show you a live demo. I'm having a hard time. All right. So, this is, uh, it's a bit fuzzy. Can you see back there? Uh, it's kind of rough. Okay, let me give you the layout of the land out. This is uh, my bank uh, login. Okay? And the only thing that you need to worry about, other than the pretty pictures, is on the login side, it says uh, there's a user ID password that you cannot see, which is the typical login. And then there's a blue button. Can you see the blue button back there? Don't worry about what it says, but can you see the blue button? That one says login would secure me. I'm sorry, what? There is one, okay. Existence confirmed, thank you, sir. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log in without user IDs and passwords. So all I do is click on that button and you notice I see a QR code. Now I have my phone. I actually have an application here. Now I wanna make sure that nobody else can use that I'm going to authenticate with my fingerprint. Okay, that only keeps people away. So we scan the QR code. Hello. All right. Connectivity is not that great. My phone got authenticated and I logged in. Now this is live, guys. Okay, it was a bit fast. Let me do it again. Okay, somebody try to count how many characters my password has, okay? A thousand dollar reward to anybody who can tell me that. So I have a QR code. I have my app. Sorry. I have my app. Fingerprint, so anybody who finds my phone can't use it. Quick scan. Hello. My phone got authenticated and oops, I logged in. No user IDs, no passwords. And you notice no attack vectors either. So you have your AppSec testing, well, 74% less attacks, 67% fewer attacks, because you can't log in there. Now let me show you one more practical example. Oh, very interesting question. Uh, there is nothing specific in the QR code that's specific to the site or specific to the user. Okay? You're welcome to scan it. Anybody who wants one, I'll send you one. Just a set of numbers, that's all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The most popular question I always get asked is, how does it work? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't really disclose it, disclose it publicly, but if you have some point questions, I'll be happy to answer that. No. No. There, there is no password. Well, something's going across to authenticate yourself. Correct, but it's not a password. Well, that's my phone. This is my digital identity. That's what's getting authenticated. It's tied in. Let me show you a more... Uh, that's, that has something to do with it, that's right. That's the device fingerprinting part. Uh, actually, no, there's, there's some one-time stuff in there as well. Okay, again, thank you for trying to 
you know, break it down and see how it works. I tell you, it's the most popular. I've, I've, I've shown over a thousand demos, and that is by far the number one question I get. How does it work or that kind of stuff. So let me do this. Here's another one. And I'm sorry, uh, my QR scanner isn't scanning too well because it's a fuzzy one. So I'm going to get a little closer. I'm just trying to show you that there's no connectivity. So this is getting authenticated. I don't know if you saw my phone got authenticated. So we're logging in somewhere. Hopefully people who are sitting closer by can tell me what this website is. That's correct. So I just logged into Gmail. No passwords. No user IDs. Okay. So there is actually some real live applications for that. Um, and the nice thing is, so when I log out or when I do this, tell me how you would try to break into this. What stolen user credentials will allow you to get in here? So once you eliminate the passwords, you truly can eliminate all the, all, all the bad, bad actors trying to go through the front door. Okay? Any questions on that? Yes. Yes, I'll, I'll be happy to show that to you, but uh, I can't show it from here, but I'll, I'll go outside after the talk, be happy to show that to you. Yes, and basically in this case, uh, we, we'll, we'll send you a text message and you click on it, and then you'll get us, your phone will get associated with that email account. Yes. Yes. If you lose your phone, you go to my.secure.me, enter some information that doesn't require your phone, and you say, deactivate. That phone is no longer good. You don't have to reach it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Great question. Well, and the privacy issue, right? Because hey, uh, you know, they may steal your password, but you can change it. They steal your fingerprint. Man, you're in trouble. You can't change your finger, right? Uh, I'm sorry. What? That's correct. So, uh, at, at least, I'm a big, big proponent of, if you're going to use fingerprints, it cannot leave the device. So in this case, it stays with the device. But if you don't want to use fingerprinting, perfectly fine, we have a pin entry. So you can actually use uh, a pin instead of a fingerprint. Or, if you want to be even more secure, you can do three-factor authentication by using both pin as well as fingerprint. Okay? And, and, and that goes into how safe do you want to be versus how uh, easy do you want it to be? Now, uh, would, you, would you guys concur that this might be an easy way to log in? Okay. Well, take my word, it's actually more secure. Uh, but um, there are various ways you could do by, like I can keep it, the phone in my pocket and I can get automatic two-factor authentication without even having to lift a finger. And that would not be very secure, but that would be very easy to use. Or on the other hand, I said we can do three-factor authentication that requires both uh, 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 QR code, uh, sorry, both uh, fingerprint and a pin. So you can pick how safe you want your, uh, 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 your uh, solution to be. From organization to organization, it'll change. And uh, on a slightly anecdotal value, uh, we're talking for about a military application where they did not want a fingerprint. You had to enter the, the, your PIN. But uh, they also wanted to know if you were in distress. If somebody's holding a gun to your head, uh, you have to enter it. So you enter a different PIN, which tells you that you're distressed. You still go uh, get, get granted some access, but then the alarm bells will be ringing somewhere. So there's a whole lot of security stuff that you can do that you can't do with user IDs and passwords. And, uh, and then you don't have to only use three passwords because you know your passwords are now stolen. A very likelihood. You, did you have a Yahoo account? Thank God. Have you been a, a Blue Shield, Blue Cross patient over the last dozen years or so, 15 years or so? Well, congratulations, your password is stolen. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, with 2.5 billion, 3 billion uh, uh, passwords, 
Uh, unless you change them frequently, they got you. Uh, yes. Sorry, let me uh, take care of this gentleman, then I'll come back to you. Uh, connection between the cell phone and the device that is doing the authentication. Uh, my question is, would it work in an environment that there's no internet access uh, through a sort of connection between the cell phone and the laptop? And the other question is, uh, is there a sort of browser plugin that needs to be installed in the browser for this to work? Okay. If, uh, if you're talking about eliminating passwords and how to be able to do that, Sure, you can actually do that. You can work through Bluetooth without having to resort to internet. And there are various things you can do. Now, if you're asking whether Secure Me, the product that we built, does that, no, it does not. It does require internet access. Um, so just it, there's so many different scenarios. Uh, you just pick and choose what, where it is that you want to uh, resolve the thing. Now, one interesting question that I haven't showed you, and it's kind of hard to show on a little phone, what if you're using your mobile browser to log in? You can't scan a QR code with your phone on your phone, right? You can't do that. So uh, basically the thing, uh, it works the same way too. You do not have to carry the information, the login information, uh, at least the initiation of login information with the QR code. What you can do is, uh, I don't know if you can see, here's a mobile web page, the bank login, okay? So I'm pressing the blue button. I get our secure me. You'll see the pin pad behind it, my fingerprint, and I'm getting authenticated. Did I log in? Yeah, I logged in already. This is on two bars, okay? Uh, cell connection, no Wi-Fi. So it's actually possible to have great user experiences, uh, especially as more and more things are moving to mobile. But the key is, if you want to be more secure, just eliminate passwords. All right. You had a question, sir. I'm just trying to understand the implementation. Um, like, who has to have this? Are you the um, the company's website and the consumer? Correct. You have to sell it to both sides. Correct. So, uh, in in this case, in Securemi's case, our implementation is that you have to implement it on your website. So it'll be uh, from two minutes for a SAML, you know, Google Apps integration, to uh, maybe a week uh, custom implementation that you may want to do. Uh, depends. And for the end users, uh, typically our most secure way would be to download an app that actually does the device mobile fingerprinting. And it's possible, if you really are interested in the uh, passwordless login on authentication. Uh, it's actually possible to do this without any apps. Uh, we do that with SMS for edge cases. Like I can actually log into my Google Apps account or G Suite account just with SMS. Okay, no passwords. So uh, anybody's interested, I'm happy to give you, show you the demo later on. But is that as safe as mobile device fingerprinting? I don't think so. Is that convenient that you don't have to uh, uh, install any apps on the phone? Yeah, that's pretty good. So what is your requirements? What, is your, what are your needs? You get to decide how you want to do that. Okay? Yes? Okay. Yeah. Uh, theoretically, yes. Uh, we don't have an implementation for SSH, but you could. Actually, that's not entirely true. We have a Windows desktop. Uh, it's, you know, we get to do a lot of experiments, and uh, uh, so one of them was you know, desktop login for, for apps and stuff that was uh, running on a desktop app. So the answer is yes, it's possible to do that. Um, and again, if that's what you have a need for, uh, then you could do that. Or, you know, you could, there, there, there are only a handful of companies, very few companies that do this in the U.S. And unfortunately, the, the reason are the patents, okay? So you could actually engage one of those companies to do a custom uh, one for you or, if, if, or, 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 or get them so excited about the marketplace, they'll build one for you, but I'm not aware of one. 
Uh, someone also recommended, well, how do we do server to server uh, validation too that way? That's, that's another interesting area. But the whole point is, uh, I if there's one thing you take out of this talk is, uh, think eliminating passwords. That kind of model thinking is 56 years old. Our environment has completely changed. It doesn't serve us anymore. The only reason why we keep the password is we don't know what else to do. Everything is set up for user IDs, passwords. So once we change our thinking and start thinking no passwords, okay, then we can actually significantly increase security while making it easier for us to log in for the right people. Okay? So uh, that still needs to be, uh, I guess, proven since it's not a common marketplace uh, uh, phenomenon now to eliminate passwords. But as time goes by, I think solutions like this will become more and more prevalent because they're easy to use. Uh, you don't, and, and it's with uh, almost 200 accounts. You got to cheat. You can't remember unique passwords. And if you do, it's algorithmic. So you're again in, in, in deep trouble once uh, you know, two or three of them are, are discovered. So we don't have a choice, guys. We got to get rid of passwords, right? Anybody concur with me on getting rid of passwords? Okay, a few, and the rest I've been able to impress. Okay, that's nice. You had a question, sir. Yes. Um, By the way, we have luncheon coming up soon. I'll be here for as long as we need. I'll answer all the questions. Um, in scenario of web apps, um, the backend that is required to implement the solution on the server side, does it have to use any sort of uh, directory services or federation like Windows, or could it be working with other sort of directory services out there? Yeah, you could. Uh, it's basically a federated identity provider. So you could go to it directly. You could go through it through SAML. Uh, or you could even go through uh, Active Directory if you wanted to. So uh, they're, they're great questions we're asking for. The, the thing is, well, how do we take something like this and, and fit it into what we have, right? So. Uh, and as, as engineers, you know, we'll always find a way to fit something in because that's what we do, right? But the whole thought is, are we thinking about getting rid of passwords? Okay? So I'm glad you're asking that questions. If you have more uh, uh, questions, there's more information. I'm always happy to help out. Uh, you don't have to use our products, uh, you know. Uh, so I, I truly believe in uh, getting rid of passwords. If uh, that's... You know, going to be my third invention that I've done. That's probably going to be the best one I've ever done, and I'll probably die with that one. <laughs> yes. Any other questions? Yes. That's a, that's a great question. So, uh, first of all, what you ha don't cannot see in the site is we actually have a verification server, and that's private to us. It, it works like DNS, if you know, in, in, a, uh, uh, in a distributed model. You know, uh, you know, you have like uh, root DNS, uh, ADNS, a verisign for you know .com domains, for example, right? So you go there, and then it may trickle down to children DNSs. So every DNS is private, right? So uh, whatever information is in there, some of it could be qu queried, but most uh, normal people uh, are, who are not you know, power users or, or programmers don't know what's in a DNS. But it gets you there. So it's a similar kind of method, OK? And we actually have a version for healthcare industry that doesn't have any PII in it. No patient information, no contact information, nothing. So, uh, and the whole idea was, even if we get hacked, there's nothing there to steal. It's not that it's encrypted, it's not that it's hidden, it's not that half of it is here and half of it is there, you can't put it together, it just doesn't exist. Uh, with the HIPAA compliance, you have to sign BAAs. Anybody know what BAAs are? Uh, those are agreements that you have to sign as a provider 
for healthcare organizations, and they're getting very, very uh, 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 difficult for vendors because uh, a, a breach in healthcare costs three hundred eighty-four dollars per patient. A, br a regular breach costs only two hundred dollars per user. Uh, so, if if they have a breach and there's a thousand dollar fine per user, uh, you can imagine if you have hundreds of thousands of patients, how the fines and the costs can escalate. So they try to pass all those costs to the vendors. Okay, uh, we were recently talking uh, to a healthcare insurance provider with two million patients. Okay, and they say, "Oh, you got to sign this, and if there's any data breach, and you have a finger in it, you got to pay for it." Two million patients. Let's round up the cost of about four hundred dollars a patient. You're talking eight hundred million dollar liability. Now, anybody work for a company that can take an $800 million liability from one customer and be okay with it? We're not that big. So our solution was, let's come up with something that has no PII, no patient information in it. Yeah, we get broken into, and, and we're not saying we're so much better, CIA can get hacked, FBI can get hacked, that we will not be hacked. No, we will get hacked. Our whole design is based on the fact that we will get hacked one day and they're going to look at our stuff. The question is, what can they get and what they can do with it? Right? So if you don't store any information, then it can't be stolen. Just like the password. If you don't have a password, it can't be stolen. Okay? Any other questions? Last one? All right. Thank you very much for coming.